Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? It's Frazzleberry, actually. How you doing? Um, welcome to my Skyward Sword thoughts. My thoughts on the Skyward Sword per Nintendo Wii. Alright, um, yeah, so Skyward Sword, it, uh, when did it come out? I think it came out the November 20th? Yeah, it was exactly a month ago from today. Um, I've been playing it on and off. Uh, for the first couple days, I, er, I guess I didn't start playing until a week after it came out, but we had it. But I started playing it every day. I would complete a dungeon, get to the next dungeon, stop playing. Um, it's pretty fun doing that on and off. But um, I finally got to finishing it because I finished all my other games. And uh, let's get started with my stuffs. All right. So story. All right. Story. Um. All right. So the basic idea of the story is uh basically um there's this massive war, right? And it's like so overpowering that the goddess decides to uh, basically seal their leader and save all the humans but what she has to do is basically she, br she basically breaks part of the earth and sends it up into the sky um, separating the humans from the demons and uh, by doing that she's able to get rid of the bad guy in the process but it doesn't get rid of him completely she just basically seals him so all the humans are up in the sky living up on these islands and that's basically where that ends. Um, then the game picks up. I think they don't really specify. I think it's like a thousand or two thousand years later. Um, you basically start. You start off as playing as Link, right? Uh, Link's usually the protagonist of every Zelda game, but it's not the same Link. But you gotta remember that. Um, all right. So basically, it picks up with a uh, Link entering a tournament for his. Uh, like this Link is a. I think he's a soldier or he's a knight. He's in a knight school basically, and um, him and Zelda, they're. Uh, they're like best friends or whatever. They're like childhood friends and they're grown up and they've got some feelings for each other, you know. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, he has to participate in a race. He wins the race. Um, meets a bunch of new characters. Uh, Zelda gets separated from them when they're celebrating. And basically, Link has to take on the tunic and the sword and go find Zelda. Um, so basically, it start the game really starts once he gets the Skyward Sword. It's like the big legendary um, weapon or whatever. As always, he gets like a legendary weapon. But basically, from there on, it's um, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, really. Uh, basically, Link has to go from dungeon to dungeon, receiving these tablets. Uh, once he has these tablets, it opens up a new location. Um, this is all done over the overworld. Uh, basically, this game takes place up in the sky, so you have a bird companion. Um, it's not a special bird or anything. It's just a just a normal bird. Um. I don't know. It gets it gets a lot better. Trust me. Seriously, the first the first bunch of the game was pretty boring. Um, I would say yeah, because what you do is you you get the three tablets, then uh, then you have to go find this other island up in the sky. Once you do that, then that's when you start learning your harp. Uh, you basically have a harp in this game for your instrument or whatever. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the harp is actually probably the worst instrument Zelda has ever had. Um, there's very little like depth to it. All you really do is just sway your Wiimote to the this like the pacing of the on-screen notification or whatever. Um, it's just kind of tacked in. I wish they saved it for cutscenes. I really don't think they implemented it very well into the gameplay. Um, but yeah, basically you have to learn these songs. That opens up even more. Then you have to that it basically then you have to create your sword, the the big legendary sword that every Zelda game has. Um, I won't go into spoilers because people probably like Zelda, um, but I'm not gonna lie, there isn't much story to the game. There is more than they've ever had before in a Zelda game. Um, that's just because there's actually some characters that aren't just copy-pasted, like, Ganon was always the same, he was just like this big bad guy who was always like, I'll kill you all, I'm gonna survive, you're gonna die, I don't know. Um, this game introduces like, Gahiram, the Demon Lord, I think, I think that's how you pronounce the name, I don't know, it's really weird looking. Um, he's basically trying to resurrect his demon master or whatever. Um, there's him, Zelda, it's basically the typical character. Um, just cutesy elf who's like, um, she's just Link's friend. She doesn't really have any personality or anything. Th there is one character though that surprisingly gets some character development. Uh, his name is Groose. He's um, basically the bully of your town or whatever. In the beginning of the game, he kidnaps your bird, and he's just kind of an asshole to Link because he's jealous that Link's so close to Zelda. Um, his character actually develops later on. He realizes that Link has like all this burden on his shoulder, and he realizes that he should be more supportive and, you know, like just be a friend overall. 
don't know, that's about as far in the character development to get. Um, I will say the story is good. Uh, it's not Wind Waker, or, I don't know, it's hard to compare those two because Wind Waker was, I don't know, it had a lot of good stuff to it, but the story was the first in the series to really make you want to save the world. Well, not just save the world, but you had another purpose besides saving the world. This game, you also have the same situ situation, like, somebody you know gets kidnapped, you gotta go save them. Um, but while doing that, you, have to, you also have to save the world. So, I don't know, I'd say this and Wind Waker are very close when it comes to story. So I do approve of a story, it's pretty good. Um, gameplay, if you've played a Zelda game, you've played all Zelda games. Um, basically, it's always the same. You start off with a small amount of health points, you usually get a sword and a shield in the beginning of the game. You go to a dungeon, you get a tool, like, let's say you get the whip from this dungeon, then you go to the next dungeon, you get the, uh, the leaf blower, then you go to the next dungeon, you get the, uh, the grappling hook, or the, the bombs, or the digging gloves. Basically, you get these tools, and you use the tools to progress further into dungeons. Um, this one, though, around, uh, there, there is a pretty big number of tools, but the same about in every game. Uh, it's like, around, like, eight or nine different tools, um, and you do use most of them quite a bit. Uh, the slingshot, not so much though. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, pretty much everything else you use quite a bit. At least once or twice every dungeon or couple dungeons apart. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll. If you've played Zelda, you've played Zelda. Now let me talk about the new features. Um, yeah, basically, new features. Um, they've added a upgrading system. Basically what this means is, uh, as you're exploring the world, you kill monsters and you break open things. What this does is it, they have a drop ratio of like, I don't know, maybe it's 50%, maybe it's a little little higher, or a little lower, I mean. Um, basically they randomly drop items, like, like let's say you kill a skeleton, he, he has a chance of dropping a, a skull decoration. Um, what, what this means is basically, you get these items, like this loot. You can take it back to your town, and then you can use it to upgrade your equipment. Um, that would be cool if upgrading was worth it. Um, I just think it takes way too much farming. Where like you have to keep going and getting more items to keep upgrading. So I never upgraded a single item, just because I didn't. I didn't really want to keep getting items, but I did have every single item in the game. So that's pretty cool. Um, they introduced a storage system. Basically what this means is uh, you have your normal backpack where you keep your tools, but then you have the hero's storage or something like the hero's pouch I think is what it's called. Um, you basically get these limited slots where you can put, um, like let's say you get an arrow attachment. That'll make it so you can carry more arrows, but it also takes a slot up in your, your equipment bag or whatever. So you can only have a certain amount of these enhancements or whatever in there. So What the storage system does is it allows you to put these items in there. So let's say you get the this this arrow pouch that allows you to carry 50 additional arrows. Um, if you wanted to like store that, you could do that. Put another item in there. Um, I didn't use it, but it's there if you want to use it. Um, also, they added in these like insects and stuff. I, I had no desire to catch insects, but it's there if you want to. Um, I really don't know what they do. I'm guessing side quests. This game supposedly has a lot of side quests, but I, I only saw like one or two. I didn't do them, by the way. <laughs> That's probably why. Um, and then the big thing this game has is the motion controls. Uh, what it's being advertised is, is you can... It's like the first true motion control game where you can... You swing your sword in the direction and it does that in the game. So a lot of these puzzles and dungeons and monsters are based around that idea. Um, yeah, for the most part it does work pretty well. Uh, there are a couple issues I had with it though. Um, well, first off, it, you still just waggle the shit out of your enemy to kill him. Uh, there is a little bit of strategy with some enemies, but for the most part, you just swing up, down, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Just, you just keep swinging as fast as you can, and if it doesn't break their guard, then occasionally you'll knock them over. If you knock them over, you can do your death blow, which instant kills them. So there, there is a couple enemies that you actually do have to use your, your motion, like directional attacking on, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to get past most enemies. Um, aiming also has an issue with that. Uh, basically, if you're you have to be pointing your Wiimote directly at the sensor bar, is like before you start aiming. Otherwise, it's gonna go haywire. Um, it's gonna count the direction that you were pointing in as the middle of the screen. So, 
you, you kind of have to get used to that. You just have to always move your your Wiimote directly to the motion sensor before you start aiming. Um, same with the harp. Uh, you, you're supposed to match your harp up with the speed of the uh, the on-screen. Like they use different things, but basically you have this little circle that gets bigger and smaller. You're supposed to use your harp to the same speed of that. Um, there was a couple times where it just wouldn't detect that I was strumming to that speed. It was just counting it as too fast or too slow. So that got kind of annoying. But I will say, gameplay, I do approve of. Um, there are a couple of small issues with gameplay, but for the most part, it's pretty fun just blowing your way through enemies and swinging your sword randomly in the living room and people are confused at why you're swinging your arm around. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, sound, this is definitely the biggest fault of the game. Um, there are some good songs. I wouldn't say they're up to the, the standards of the other Zelda games, but there are some good songs. A lot of the songs I could care less for. Mainly the dungeon music. Um, like, I, lo I love the uh, Skyloft, the, the main city song. That's pretty good. I like Zelda's theme. I like... Uh, sh there's just a lot of good songs, but there's also way more worse ones. Um, sh there's no voice acting. I can't touch on that. Although, the sounds that they do make are pretty cool. Um, you know Zelda makes all these like cutesy little air sounds and merchants are like, oh, what's up, bud? And like, um, yeah, I don't know. Link does just Link does his y normal yells and stuff, and yeah. Um, but yeah, sound is definitely the weakest part. I I can't approve of it. All right, this is definitely my biggest fault for the game. Um, all right, I will talk about my likes and dislikes now. Um. Okay, like one. They introduced running in this game. Uh, if you hold A button, you're able to sprint for a limited time. You have like a little green meter. Similar to the, the underwater gauge that a lot of Zelda games use. Um, but basically you use that to climb up walls or use it to climb up like quicksand. or just There's certain puzzles based around that. I like running. It's pretty cool. Um, I like the linear simplified approach they took to this game. Um, what I mean by this is, uh, basically a lot of Zelda games had backtracking and you had to go like, you'd go from dungeon to the overworld and once you're in the overworld you'd have so many different entrances and exits. This game, it doesn't have that, it just has the sky which you can see where every single island is. Every single island is pretty much straightforward except for the dungeons because you do have to backtrack through those but, um, I don't know, I just, I felt that I didn't really need a guide as much as I did with the other Zelda games. So I, I do like that approach they have. Um, like three. Uh, every Zelda game you have a companion who's like an assistant or whatever. This game introduces Fi or Fi, however you want to pronounce it. Um, she's basically the guardian of the Skyward Sword that you use. Um, basically you hit down on your D-pad and she comes out and she can do it do a bunch of different tasks I guess for you. Um. Okay, like one of the things she can do is like track how long you've been playing for. One of the things she can do, she can tell you rumors about different areas, like where side quests might be, or like where heart pieces might be. Um, she can tell you exactly what you're doing in that room, what you should be doing in that room. Um, she just gives you some good advice and stuff here and there. Um, and she has a bunch of other cool features, but uh, I'm not gonna get into those. Uh, okay, my dislikes. All right, this is, this is a pretty big one. Um, if you die, you basically have to reload your... You don't have to reload your save, but they, what they do is they make you... You start at the save point last before that room you're in. So, um, basically, once you go back into the room, you can't skip the talking that you were, you've already gone through before when you did that part. Um, what they do is, for cutscenes, you're able to skip them, but for talking, you can't skip those. You have to just hold A button. It speeds it up a little bit, but it could speed it up a lot more. Um, it just gets really annoying when you're on a boss fight, you die, you go back outside the boss room, you go back inside the boss room, you have to listen to this dude talking for a little bit, then you finally get to fight him again. Um, it just, it gets really annoying, I don't see why they kind of added in a skip feature or something. If you're curious, I'd say rent it or borrow it, but if you like Zelda, just buy it.